Here at Helmuth Ford, we are a small town dealership with no hassle and no pressure. The Brooklyn Opera House in Brooklyn, Iowa presents Iowa country artist Jake Simon along with Blake Jack and South 35 in concert on Saturday, September 21st at 8 p.m. Tickets are just $25 and available through eventbrite.com or use the QR code on your screen. That's Jake Simon and Blake Jack and South 35 Saturday, September 21st, 8 p.m. at the Brooklyn Opera House. Don't miss it. Retro Antique Tour Fall Edition is coming up Friday, September 20th and Saturday, September 21st. Embark on a shop hop adventure designed for people to discover hidden gems in shops and communities in a well-organized and distinctive antique shopping experience. With participating businesses in Oskaloosa, Pella, New Sharon, Beacon, and Atumwa. For more information, visit brushedbyjude.com and click on the link for the Retro Antique Tour. Or reach out via email at brushedbyjude at gmail.com or call 641-660-2536. Field goal attempt for the redshirt freshman Kyle Conrarty with nine seconds to go from the right hash. Snaps good, holds good, kick it on the way by Conrarty, end over end. And it is good! Kyle Conrarty hit a 54 yard field goal! And I was seen leads in 20 to 19! Oh. At the end of the day, we all know it's a cyclone state. All right, welcome to this edition of Morgan You Asked For. It is a cyclone state. Trying a few new things, a little bit more production. Hopefully that worked well. And if you see, um, or if things are a little bit uh, chaotic tonight or whatever, it's I'm trying some new things and new technologies. So we're going to see how it goes. And I'm not great at all that stuff. But we're going to try it, and we're going to do the best we can. Um, as you heard, um, Iowa State does win the Cyhawk game 20-19 to 19 on not a last second field goal, but definitely last few seconds. I think there was six seconds left when it was made. Um, just real quick, a little recap. If you care about this game, you've heard it recapped. It is Wednesday night. You probably, you know, heard it to death. You know, Hawkeye fans, Cyclone fans, everything. So we're not going to spend very much time recapping it. More talk about going forward, what that means for each team. So just a quick recap for me. Iowa State could not have started worse. It started exactly how Iowa wins football games. A stop. Iowa State stopped them. A punt inside the one. Two good plays out to about the eight or nine yard line. Gave themselves a chance at like third and two and then a, a false start. And then another false start. And the crowd's in it. The punt is bobbled. We get it out. Very quickly, we throw an interception at the 18 yard line. The difference is there wasn't the critical error where it was a, a pick six. It wasn't a fumble, and they held him to field goals and not touchdowns. And that's really what this game was about, was inside the five-yard line two times in the first half and then the two-point conversion in the second half. Iowa State never let them get touchdowns inside the five-yard line, and it was first and goal inside the five twice and then obviously the two-point conversion from the three and in every one of those i believe caleb johnson who had 187 yards and was about 235 pounds and always fell forward always would get a couple yards was not in the ball game that's the travesty of it and then iowa state played well you have to make those plays and i will let iowa state stay in the game and then it came back to get them that's the recap of the game. The very, very cliff notes, very fast version, but that was the game. Yeah, essentially it was. If you look at a couple stats real quick, if you didn't watch the game, you see Iowa State was two for 14 on third down. And then if I told you Iowa had 204 rushing yards, you would have thought, well, that's an Iowa win right there. And really what it comes down to me more than anything was, was Cade McNamara. Uh, just, I just don't think he's very good. He, he he can't be 13 for 29 for 99 yards. Now, a little bit of that is Iowa State, but he had 
he had one a couple of bad picks. The one there where I think it was the third quarter where Iowa State had a bad punt. Iowa gets it back in Iowa State's territory, first and 10. Kind of a cool little play design, but Iowa State, to their credit, had it sniffed out. Defender was right there, and Kate throws it right to him for an easy interception. That's quarterbacking 101. You don't make that throw on first down in your opponent's territory. You know, you dirt it at someone's feet or you take a sack for a short loss, and then you still got second and third down to hopefully gain some yards, maybe get in field goal range. So to me, this is – I hate to, you know, put it on one player. It's not all on him, of course, uh, but I thought K was pretty atrocious in this game with with the way that we were running the ball. And then, of course, the the two-point conversion, when that, when that took place, I really wasn't uh, – I wasn't pounding my fist that we shouldn't go for it. I wasn't pounding my fist that we should go for it. It was just – when it was going on, I thought – I don't know if this is the best idea. I, I understood it from the score perspective. And then when we missed it, kind of in the back of my mind, I'm like, I wonder if that might come back to bite us. Again, at, at the moment, I, I didn't feel strongly either way, but I, I did kind of wonder Iowa electing to not to take a point off the board potentially might come back to get us, and it did. And then, of course, Iowa State on that final drive, like I text you, a lot of clutch plays and a big-time kick. Yeah, that the two point conversion by the book and the analytics, you go for two. But I'm surprised that Kirk did it because of how close the game still was at that time. It wasn't, and if you kick the every point matters. Now, it I think if that situation happens and there was four minutes left in the game, and you're if you get the two point conversion, um, the game's over, essentially. I think you do it if that's what you need. But at that time, every point matters. Now, you know, if they kick the extra point, it's a tie ball game. You know, and then I, so they did come back to bite them. And thankfully, they didn't make it as a, as a Cyclone fan. But yeah, there was just several things that they did differently that were very questionable for Kirk Ferentz. And I don't know if that's a Tim Lester influence that wants to do these things a little bit different, or I don't know what it was, but Iowa State made adjustment. For the first time in a long time in this series, Kirk Ferentz was outcoached. He hasn't won all the games, but I do think he's always coached this game better than Cyclone coaches over his 25 years, whatever it's been, I think about 20, 25, 26 years. He is out coach cycle and coaches 80% of the time. But this situation, he got out coached bad in the second half, I think, by the cycle and coaches, both Matt Campbell, um, the offensive coordinator, and John Haycock, the defensive coordinator. If you watch what happened, Iowa State – on defense, they had the, the stretch zone, whatever, outside C-tack, C-gap runs were big runs. But other than that, they were not really able to run the football. Except they'd get two, three yards, and they couldn't stop them. And I'm surprised they went away from that. When they put it in McNamara's hands, he cannot make a big throw. And I don't know if he's been taught so bad that Lester can't get it out of him, or he's just not good. I mean, I think I'm leaning towards he's just not very good. But he throws off his back foot all the time. All the time. And against Illinois State last week, it was okay. But throwing off that back foot into Luke Lachey, and it was an okay throw, but it gave just a little bit extra time for our DB to jump in front of it to make that interception. <laughs> you just you can't make that throw, and you're right, he does throw off his back foot a lot. One thing I was thinking about too during toward the end of the game and after is, you know, he was at Michigan under under Harbaugh. Harbaugh probably mil milked every ounce of talent that he had, and still decided to move on from him. Well, when you come to Iowa, I mean, as much as I love Ferentz and the Iowa program, uh, Harbaugh's on a different level of coaching. So yeah. it's no surprise that he's come back down to earth to probably do what he actually is. And last year, the coaching that he got, who knows if it ruined him, right? But I just I lean more toward. I think I've seen enough. I mean, at, at this point, you could put the Northwestern guy in. Uh, I'm sure Iowa might, maybe, or should look good versus Troy. That doesn't matter to me. 
I mean, we'll see when we get into Big Ten play. Like I said, the, after the first week, nothing really changed for me. It was still to be determined. And after watching against Iowa State, I feel less confidence about our passing game. There, like I said, the running game's there, which is nice, with Caleb Johnson at least. But the passing game uh, leaves a lot to be desired for about the sixth straight year now. Yeah, your stats were you know, impeccable. Iowa runs for 200 yards, had one back for 187, and they lose a football game? That's insane. That, that's Iowa drew – I mean, how this game was played is how Iowa wins games. Punting was good. Iowa State made a few mistakes. The thing that the thing that changed was, and you, the play of the game was probably that interception, but it was it was the timing of that. Iowa State missed a field goal to end the half that you know maybe should have got three points out of. Then they got the ball to start the second half, trying to get that two for one, two in a row, and then they went like three and out or maybe one first down and punted a bad punt. It was kind of a shank. And, I mean, I understand what Lester was doing. He was trying to go for the kill. I mean, they if Iowa State score or Iowa scores on that drive, it's the game is over, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown. And especially if it's a touchdown, that game is over. And we're at 12 minutes left to go in the third quarter. And it, it came back to get him, got the pick, and then Iowa State went down and scored. And a couple things, Iowa State made the plays. That first touchdown to Higgins, he intercepted the interception. That was crazy how good that catch was. It was right in the D-back's hands, and he stole it from him. And then that last drive, that out and up on, on Castro, great throw, great catch. But Phil Parker is the best in the country, one of the best in the country. But you cannot play man-to-man and let them get outside in that situation. That was, I think that was a bad call. Yeah, Castro is one of my favorite defensive backs ever to oh, play absolutely. in Iowa. I think he's one of the he best ever beat. to do it. Um, he got beat on that play. And, you know, usually Iowa defense holds up in those situations, but Iowa State's got really good receivers, and they were able to make the plays. Like I said, that last drive, it was just clutch play after another by Iowa State. So you you got to tip your cap to them. I mean, that's, that's do or die situation there, and Iowa State made every play that they had to. And then the kick was just absolutely nutted. It was it was a straight up golf shot where you flushed it and you hit it two feet to the pin and it spun and stopped right by the hole. I mean that was he yeah, that would have been good could, at sixty plus. Yeah, that that was a and how what do you think about this? I've heard some people, and I don't know if I disagree with it. Would Iowa have been a better chance to try to kick a sixty seven yard field goal there? Because obviously McNamara can't throw it that far. I guess it, I, I haven't looked at it, but I heard today on the one of my shows I listened to that the ball actually only went 35 yards in, from the line of scrimmage. Now he threw it like 50 because he was behind the line of scrimmage, but from the line of scrimmage to where the ball was thrown was only 35 yards downfield. So they had no chance to get it to the end zone, and they knew that. These kickers can kick it. Now, a 67-yard field goal, is it probably going to get blocked because you don't get the height and you have to hold it. You have to block for an extra second so he can get that height. You know, probably not happening anyway. And then he obviously has to make it from 67. But I think if the roles are reversed and seeing what the Iowa State kicker just did, I think you give him a shot. That would have been cl- Iowa State's would have been close from 67. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how far your kicker can really kick it. I mean, if he if he struggles to even kick 60, then what are you doing? I, I think more than anything, Cade doesn't really have a super strong arm, at least in that situation. What I would rather yeah. see rather than a Hail Mary or a kick is throw a 15-yard pass and start lateraling around. I, I, that would be Pray my goal, the actually. I, I, do, Cal Stanford. I do some hook and lap type stuff. Yeah, hope for that because if Cade can't get to the end zone and you don't have a kicker that really can get – plus 60 on a kick, I, I just, I'd throw a 10, 15 yard pass and start pitching it around. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I was just surprised at what they, at how not close to the end zone it was. All right. That's probably enough recap just because it is Wednesday and everybody's done it that follows this. Let's go forward. 